and welcome to Hub Chat Health. Our discussion today is about our skin. Did you know that our skin is the biggest organ of elimination? If you are having issues with your skin, this is a great session to listen to. Have you ever considered what you're eating, drinking, putting on your skin, or exposing yourself to? Today, we are going to look at all of these factors. We will discuss feeding, healing, and caring for our skin, and how to keep our skin functioning its best. Our expert today is Sosa Stojkovic. Welcome. Let me just get her up there. There she is. Welcome to Hub Chat Health. Hi, Renee. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here today. Uh, Sosa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm a naturopathic counsellor. I'm a facial therapist and a massage therapist. I run a health and beauty clinic in our town in central Queensland, Australia. It's called Closer to Eden. Um, I offer um, organic facials, microdermabrasion. I offer massages as well, all with organic products. Um, I also offer free health consultations as a part of our health ministry. So our health ministry is called Take Charge of Your Health, and um, we can be found on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, um, Signal, Viber. Oh, look, that's great. Look, before we start our discussion, let's start with a prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we want to thank you that you've created us in such a special way. And we ask for your presence here today as we discuss ways of being healthy and especially ways of looking after our skin. We ask this now in your name. Amen. So our skin, it's all about our skin. Can you tell us about the function, the layers and the structure of our skin? Sure. So as you can see on the slides as well, um, skin, uh, you mentioned, is the, large, is the largest elimination uh, mechanism, which is true. It's part of um, the elimination and excretory system. It is the largest organ in our body, as many of us know already. Uh, it basically covers our whole body and its main purpose is to serve as a barrier to protect our body from harmful substances outside of it. So um, our skin absorbs as well as excretes. It takes in oxygen, nitrogen, other nutrients um, to keep our skin healthy. And uh, what goes in our body is just as important, if not more important for our skin than what we put directly on our skin. So um, our skin detects different sensations, um, heat, cold, pressure, uh, contact and pain through nerve endings in the dermis, which are easily affected by wounds. And if we have major uh, let's say three uh, third degree burning, we might not detect um, the heat um, because the nerve endings might be damaged. So these work really uh, well in the first and second degree burns. Um, so the composition of the skin, as we can see, the skin has many sub layers, but the two primary layers are the two epidermis, which is the outer layer that we can see, touch and feel and the dermis which is directly underneath that so the dermis has the nerve endings um, it's got oil and sweat glands um, it's got um, oil um, it's got our pores and hair follicles and um, that's how we detect the the heat and um, cold and pressure our lives are built on habits and and I'm assuming that there are some good routines and maybe some not so good routines, but we will focus today on the good routines that we should follow in order to have good skincare. Yeah, so um, let's let's talk about our daily routine, what it should look like, um, our weekly routine and our monthly routine, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So 
I usually recommend washing the skin twice a day and not more than twice a day um, because then we're running the risk of stripping the skin from its natural oils. And why we wash the skin twice a day is because of that reason, to get rid of the excess oil and debris and um, dust. So I also recommend using water-based products for the skin, not drying, not clogging or too oily especially if you have acne prone skin but we will find out um, later as well we'll touch a little bit on um, what oils you can use that are actually not clogging so um, i recently started um, toning my skin with witch hazel extract which is very good for restoring the ph balance if you have acne prone skin and just basically for all skin types um, you can use serums that are designed uh, for your skin type. You can use coconut oil, rosehip oil, sea buckthorn oil um, to the damp skin and massage. And while, uh, why I say damp skin? Because while um, when you wash your skin and you don't dry, it's good for a couple of reasons. Um, because you don't want to remove more oil than you need to with the towel, um, which is the way I like to do it. And also the pores are open. So then the oil, the little bit of oil you're going to put on your skin is not going to clog the pores. So it's going to act as a moisturizer. Um, if you're going to moisturize after, um, use a lighter one for the morning and heavier one before bed. And again, when I say heavy, moisturizers should not be clogging. Um, and uh, good things to follow are keep your hands off your face, your hair, your phone. And um, daily we have to make an effort to manage our stress because it does really affect our skin. Now, that's an interesting point you make there. So you've talked about your hands, your hair off your face because obviously mm -hmm. that creates more oil. But you've, mm -hmm. also, you've also talked about your phone. Can you explain that one? Um, well, we have to think about every time we put our phone on our face, it's basically, if you put your phone on your face and then you take it off, you'll see that you've got oil and whatever you have on your skin, you've got on your phone. So unless you're ready to, I guess, disinfect and wipe your phone every time you use it, then that should not really go back on your face, apart from the reasons of radiation, <laughs> Um, so a weekly routine I recommend either dry brushing or um, exfoliating um, or even microdermabrasion if you have a home microdermabrasion machine. Uh, so twice a week for dry brushing, exfoliating, not more than that. Again, for the same reason that we need um, some of those natural oils. Um, try to do those uh, dry brushing and exfoliating in circular motions, as you can see in the picture. Um, going against gravity and against how our body would age and sag, I guess. So up the neck, um, away from the nose, the creases and smile lines, as you can see, up the forehead and away again from the midsection of the brows where we tend to have the number 11. So uh, what, when you've talked about the dry brushing, what are we using? So you can go even to the supermarket and get a dry brush that is specifically for the skin because they tend to be softer and um, you wash your skin as normal try to use something that's not a cream cleanser um, use something that's going to purposefully dry your skin a little bit and then um, you dry your skin uh, with a tissue i like to use a tissue because it's not very harsh so i use a tissue just um, tapping on the skin make sure it's all dry and then in circular motions or um, just again away from the midsection of your face and against gravity, uh, do the dry brushing. What it does is that it actually draws blood to the surface as well, which is very good for healing and anti-aging. And that's always something we're, look we're always looking for, isn't it? Anti-aging. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so a couple of other things, I guess, is the fruit enzyme pill. I always recommend doing it with a professional, but if you find one that is not too harsh, you can use it at home. Um, do it weekly and not um, more often than weekly and make sure you moisturize. And of course, change pillowcases weekly or at least turn the pillows over. Again, for the same reason that we mentioned the phone, because it collects um everything that's on our face and on our hair as well when we sleep on the pillows. So, Yeah, something I, I learned was sure. that it was great to put your pillows in the sunshine on a regular basis, even daily, because the sun helps to get rid of some of that bacteria that is on our pillows. So leave them as much as possible out in the sunshine. Absolutely. The sun is antimicrobial. Um, that's also why we should hang our clothes out in the sun as well. Um, a lot of people worry about the discoloration which happens when we hang our clothes, but that's a small price to pay, I guess. So uh, the monthly routine I like in my salon, I offer microdermabrasion. And um, I recommend doing this monthly because what it does is it um, basically gets rid of the first couple of layers of the skin. Um, and I'm talking about those sub layers. Um, so it shouldn't bleed, you shouldn't be red. So this is microdermabrasion, not dermabrasion, which is um, something that used to be pretty common. Uh, but thankfully, it's not as common anymore, because my skin was actually damaged because of that. And um, anyone worried about microdermabrasion should know this is not the um, dermabrasion. Um, the fruit enzyme peel can be combined with the microdermabrasion treatment or a standalone treatment. Again, um, with a professional, um, preferably. Yeah, absolutely. And some of these, it is important to, be able to go to a professional, uh, and some of them we can use at home. Um, I, I guess I guess the thing is here, are there effective natural treatments that we can use on our skin? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the things that I've used myself and I've seen others use that works, and even in my salon that we've used and they work. So I myself use sea buckthorn oil. That sea buckthorn oil is in a lot of um, um, suppositories and um, it's also used to heal burns, uh, which means that it's not irritating, it's not harsh. If you can use it on the burns, then obviously it's a very gentle and natural way to treat wounds and um, it's good for anti-aging as well. When we so, were little, my brother burned um, his elbow and um, and I just remember my mom using sea buckthorn oil. One thing to remember is that it, it can stain, uh, so maybe don't put it on your face and um, go to bed, especially if your bedding is a light colour. Um, so can we just go back to that? So how would we use it then if we don't leave it on our skin? Do we just put it on and then wash it off? or? Yeah, so what I do is after I wash my skin, I leave it um, damp, a little bit wet from um, the water that I washed my face with. And I'll just put on my fingertips a little bit of the sea buckthorn oil and I'll just rub it on uh, my wet skin. It just acts as a moisturizer, after which I'll actually put my cream on, the night cream. So it kind of mixes with that and it won't stain. And I just try to stay on my back the first um a bit of the night you know yeah so the other thing i love using is rosehip oil so you can get one that is specifically for the face um, but if you get an organic one it doesn't really matter um, so rosehip oil is anti-aging anti-stretch marks and it's got high levels of vitamin c which means it's going to help your skin um to retain its um, its moisture, it's going to balance out um, the oil levels and also smoothen out um, the skin and discoloration. Um, you will notice that a lot of when I was pregnant, I actually noticed that a lot of um, oils for um, stretch marks for pregnancy, they had either rosehip oil in the ingredients or the main ingredient was rosehip oil. So I made my own 
anti-stretch mark oil, um, which is very simple, equal parts of rosehip oil, uh, melted shea butter and coconut oil. So I mix it together. It will set a bit and um, I would put it on my skin, on the stomach, and then I would actually put like a belly band around it so it doesn't stain everything else. Um, and it's quite nice in winter. Um, another thing that is very easy, I actually grow aloe vera in my backyard and I use the inside part of it. Um, you can, the inside of it, you can um, eat, you can put on your skin. It's good for burns. It's actually very good for sunburn. Um, and if you take it um, internally, it will help your stomach as well. Um, Another thing that I love is cucumbers. Again, very easy, um, easy to source, easy to use. Um, I love it for the antioxidant activity. Uh, the juice of a cucumber can nourish the skin, of course, help with sunburn. It's soothing, cooling, anti-inflammatory, great for puffy eyes. The slices of cucumbers can be applied on the eyes and it's great. In my salon, I use a cucumber spritz toner, especially after the microdermabrasion treatment or um, the fruit enzyme peels um so try it um put on your eyes when you have puffy eyes and it's a good excuse to lie down for half an hour uh, it will help a lot it's so soothing isn't it it is yeah absolutely basically the um, cucumber spritz can be used on sunburn and all kinds of different um, skin irritation it's basically yeah non-irritating and very soothing yeah, so another thing that actually is not spoken about as much is witch hazel extract. A lot of skincare products will have this for acne prone skin, but I found this again after pregnancy, after having my kids, that I had this big bottle of witch hazel extract and um, I didn't know what to use it for. And then I realized, hey, I can use it for my skin. And I started using for my skin. I have acne prone skin myself and I have to be quite cautious about the products that I'm using. So um, it's basically a clear liquid um, distilled from the twigs and bark from the witch hazel tree. It can be used as a toner. It's actually a, a pretty affordable alternative um, to toners or anti-acne medication. Um, I apply it with a cotton ball. I just rub it on the skin. Or if you have a spray bottle, you can use it that way. Do you just um, rub it straight on your skin? Yeah, so I just... Um, I just wet it with the witch hazel extract and I just rub it on the skin after I wash my skin. Um, I'll rub that on and then after that I'll just put, if I'm using a serum, I'll use a serum. If not, then I'll just um, put my moisturizer back on. It doesn't dry the skin. How like, you know, how you use tea tree oil, it can dry the skin. Um, this doesn't. Yeah, so the great thing is it can be used on all skin types and sensitive and acne prone um, and it is also used postpartum for soothing and healing the affected areas. And um, it's good for diaper rash as well. Um, another thing is calendula. So flowers are edible. Calendula oil is antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Um, you can use it on acne-prone skin. Uh, flowers can be infused in olive oil or sweet almond oil as a skin soothing lotion. Um, and you can purchase calendula lotions or creams. Um, I've actually had success with my eczema client in my salon using calendula cream. Absolutely. It's interesting. I've just started making some calendula um, balms and creams, actually. So we'll do a session on that coming up, and maybe Salsa, we can get you back and, <laughs> um, and and to talk us through some of this. It's it's actually very easy to do, um, and it's great. It feels absolutely beautiful on the skin. Um, are there natural ways of controlling these conditions? Um, uh, there absolutely are things that we should stay away from and things that we can use. Um, so I came across a medically reviewed article written um, by someone that states that after many years of suffering from severe eczema, uh, the diet that they implemented that helped was uh, small amounts of meat. If you can do no meat, it will be preferable. Um, no dairy, no cane sugar, lots of whole grains, lots of beans and lots of fresh produce. And um, there is evidence as well that gut health is a major factor in the cause and treatment of eczema. 
and um, oatmeal um, can be beneficial for soothing the skin. Also, there's not much scientific evidence that suggests that it helps with um, psoriasis or eczema, but it can soothe. It can. It's also a very gentle way to exfoliate. Um, uh, finely ground and boiled oatmeal is a good way to exfoliate the skin. Um, I actually had a friend who was um, a very um aware of her skin and very cautious about her skin and she used to wash her skin with oatmeal so that stuck with me and um she's got great skin so um mm. i i take that as um we should be using that yeah. there's many benefits also to turmeric i mean you can take it internally you could use it externally on a cut or a wound i know that you can mix it with honey and, and use it as well um how do you use turmeric what do you do uh, so I personally use it in a face mask. Um, I didn't include a picture um, because it doesn't look um, that great. Uh, but I use it with bentonite clay. I mix it with um, either coconut oil or sea buckthorn oil, rosehip oil, all of the good oils that you can um, mix with it. And then I will put some um, either water or depending on how much oil you have put, that might be enough. So... I just put it on the skin after washing my skin. I'll let it dry because it will dry. And when it does, it's a good idea to go in the shower after that to wash it in the shower because turmeric, we have to remember that it can stain. Um, so it's a good idea to wash it off in the shower and make sure it will stain your skin a little bit, but uh, next day it's going to be fine. Well, that's good to know because you don't want an orange face the next day. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, there is actually a practice in India, I believe, right before the wedding day, the bride will have like a um, turmeric face mask or something like that. And then the next day, um, that's a way for them to look um, beautiful the next day. So I tried that. And um, on the day, it looks a bit scary because you think you're going to end up with a yellow face the next day as well. But no. I was going to say, did you try it the night before your wedding? No, I didn't. I was not that brave. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Look, Felissa, it, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on HubChat Health. And I have learned so many things. And I know our viewers at home will have learned many things as well. In upcoming sessions, we will cover other health topics. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to contact us at hubchatquestions at gmail.com. Also remember, you know how social media works. So like the video, share the video, send it out to your friends and family. So also once again, I just want to say thanks for coming on HubChat Health. Would you like to end our session today with a prayer? Thank you, Renee. I would, I would love to. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Let's bow our heads. Um, dear Lord, thank you very much for um, speaking through us and working through us to share the health benefits of natural, simple remedies that we can use every day that are accessible and affordable to everyone, that we can grow ourselves and um, um, we can use them to benefit our uh, our skin, our bodies and um to be a good example to others as well and to share. Um, we thank you so much for this time that we had um, to share. Please be with us and um, we ask all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone.